at $1,000. Last year in 2020, I doubled that. This year, I'm on track to tripling that. So we're really growing. But I have a very ostentatious, ostentatious goal. And that is to get Rollage Ball in the hands of everybody in the entire world. Now, I know that's shooting for the moon, but I'd rather fall short of shooting for the moon than never hit the stars at all. So 7 billion people, it's gonna take a lot of growth. I need three things, okay? I need to make my supply chain more efficient. So more balls and more capacity. That means a capital investment. I need more people. I need more people knocking on doors. I can make a hundred sales calls a week. Five of me can make 500 sales calls a week. More people need to know about Rology because everybody deserves to feel better in their body. The third thing is distribution. We need these balls in retail chains across America. We need them in REIs, Targets. We need them in Whole Foods, okay? We also need corporate partners like American Meetings, for example, Andy. These would be a great leave behind for people that come to your clients' meetings or Viacom CBS. I cannot think of a better thing to give uh, your CBS sports team than a Rology ball customized with the Viacom logo, much like we now are able to do with any design on the back of our balls. That's a laser engraving. I also made a special one for NGLCC, which is a unicorn. So we have the capacity now to fully customize any of our products for any corporation. And that's how we're gonna grow. So what I need is I need capital investment and I need corporate partnerships. One minute. So with that, I'm Mark. I'm Merrick from Rology. You can find me at rology.com or you can join our growing community of unicorns at Rology on Instagram. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Awesome, Merrick. Thank you so much. Um, I definitely need to swap out my dog's used tennis balls in varying shapes and sizes for some Rology balls. So uh, consider me your next customer, but I will um, turn it over first uh, to Andy for feedback. So Merrick, great job. Um, it's so funny. I just bought, am I on camera? Can't see. I just bought from uh, Touchpoint last week. I wish I will definitely be buying Orology, but I just bought this last week for my- Yeah, it's dad. probably returnable. Yeah, <laughs> good point, good point. Um, so um, uh, great, great presentation. Uh, my, my one recommendation is that if you wanna be in every retail store and you know who those retail sales stores are, then in every single pitch, say who they are. Say, you know, my goal is to be with CVS and you know, this is my strategy with them. And the reason behind that is you never know who's listening, right? And they're a great, they're a great corporate partner. And it really shows that you've done your work and where you're going. My next question is just real quick. Um, have you been able to patent this? Uh, I've tried to patent it. I am, I'm a registered trademark, but I'm not able to patent a cork ball. No, yeah, cork ball, you're not. Okay. Well, you might want to, you know, there's probably lots of different, you know, I, I see all these different other massage, uh, uh, things that are done, maybe you can find one you can patent, which would be a great thing because a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of investors are going to ask the first thing they're going to ask is, is, is it patented? So maybe you have the cork ball, but you have two other or three others that are a unique thing that can still meet the need that are a certain shape or size um, and expand your product, your product line from there. Well, actually something that I am working on, which you might find interesting is I've started, um, I partnered last year to help the, um, cut and sew economy in Los Angeles with a cut and sew shop to make custom bags for the balls. And so um, the, the lady that made the bags for me, she's actually a, run, a runner and she and I are designing a special multi-purpose strap that you're able to put the ball into and hold it up against the wall so that it stays in place. But you can also take the ball out of the strap and use it as a stretching strap. So it's multifunction. And so I plan to patent that. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, any chance, any chance to make yourself truly unique and protect yourselves against a competitor? Because I know it's a very popular industry now because everyone is doing a lot of exercise at home. And any way you can, number one, differentiate yourself, but also protect your investment, which you're making, you know, your life's work is, is really, really important. Unbelievable, yes. great job. I love it. I will be buying. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. Rose, I need feedback here from Eric. 
Absolutely. Great job, Merrick. I thought you did an amazing job with timing, first of all, which is important, um, as well as sharing your story. Um, I would, um, I do have a couple of things that I would share. Um, one, if you're looking for investors, then there's a little bit more of the financial that you should consider being prepared to share and answer. So more around who are your competitors and you know how do you plan on, um, you talked a little bit about growing your company and how you plan to do that. So just, just plan on being very specific in that, you know, even if it's, you know, growing by 10% in year two, X percent in year three, um, I think that would be helpful. And then the last thing that I would say is don't limit your, um, your aspirations. So it's great that you started out in hiking, but imagine how um, your product can benefit so many others outside of hiking, right? So, uh, you know, some might listen to your presentation and think, oh, this is for hiking and I'm not a hiker. Well, mm -hmm. I've recently gotten to know, um, gotten intimate with my Peloton bike. So, you know, think about, you know, where is the trend going and how it can impact, um, you know, those, those um, physical activities that are trending and make sure you add that information or, or consider adding that information into your presentation so that you're not limiting yourself to hiking. Oh yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the feedback. That's very constructive. Um, just to let you know, the so there's definitely a bridge between the hiking and the running communities. And the last couple of months I've been banging on a lot of doors of specialty running stores and saying, hey, there's such crossover with this because runners want to take I mean, they're, you know, they're very, a lot of them are very eco-friendly and they're, they want to take these lightweight balls and roll out with them. But I also just partnered with a lotion company. A lot of companies are approaching me now for collaborations and this lotion company called Lather, uh, they wanted to do a collab and their demographic is totally different. So now I've got influencers that, I mean, Lather actually is paying influencers to talk about my stuff and they're ballet dancers. And so of course I just reached out to them and started making friends with them. So I totally agree with you that it's like super important. So thank you very much. Yep, just reach for the stars. Yeah. Awesome, Rose. Thanks for that feedback. And you know, I was thinking too when Rose was giving that feedback. Um, if you are wondering if you've partnered with any physical therapy offices um, as well, because I know anytime my PT has told me to get something, I'm like, which brand is that? Which one exactly do you have? You know that I'm using when I'm in house. Um, I think that's a really great way to sort of get the product out there and sort of verified too by um, you know additional community members outside of immediate athletes. Um, like I have sciatica, there's nothing more in the world that relieves my pain than laying down and stretching out with uh, something like a Rology ball. So th that's all great feedback, Rose. And Hector, I will turn it to you for final thoughts here for Merrick. Thank you. And thank you. And great presentation, uh, great thank product. Um, what I always have like a, just one comment when you are maybe looking for investor, maybe it would be good just to mention what, what was made of the ball. Like maybe the, what is the, the, uh, the, um, the manufacturer of the, of the product. And also um, you also mentioned the benefit, but also like I maybe uh, mentioned as other people uh, mentioned before, other benefit that you can bring uh, comparing to others. And, and I like the comment from Rose about the breakdown when looking for investor, like uh, people would like to know about the ROI, internal investment. So maybe when you break down the cost and everything, they will know um, how much internal investment they will get from the product. But rather than that, um, great product and keep the marketing, especially with the Instagram and Facebook. So that's a good platform that will help you just to get more, to more communities. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Definitely. Yeah, this is my, actually, this is the first time I've pitched uh, with more of an investor type of pitch. So um, before I'd always been more of a product pitch. So I, all of this feedback is great because it really helps me iterate and make the presentation that much better. Well, Merrick, I'm excited to join the community. So glad that you were able to pitch with us here um, at Sip and Pitch and be sure to drop your information and contact info into the chat so folks can uh, get connected with Rology. And judges, thanks for your feedback on this first round. So with that, we are going to move into our next presenter, 
comprehensive consulting group. Thank you, Sabrina. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stetson Marshall, and I am the president and CEO for Comprehensive Consulting Group, or CCG. CCG is a risk compliance and operations management consulting firm. We were established back in 2018, and we started in Chicago. Um, since then, we've grown to have an office in Chicago and in Boston, but we have a nationwide presence. So if you're in California, or if you're down in Florida or Texas, we still have the capability to partner with you and turn those business possibilities into realities. And that's exactly why Comprehensive Consulting Group or CCG was started. We started with the intention of creating a space or um, assisting business owners and leaders in um, growing and, and focus on what they enjoy doing most, what they're passionate about, the reason that they started their firm and that they are in the positions that they are in. CCG does this by collaborating with leaders in the small business with the capacity and desire to move into the medium business space and the larger business space, um, nonprofits and uh, government organizations. And we talk about government organizations, we're talking about at all three levels, the federal, the state, and the local levels. And we work with them to develop and implement business solutions that protect, prepare, and position them for the future. CCG is 100% black owned. We are a newly certified LGBT business entity. So thank you, NG. LCC for that. <laughs> and we are also an SBA hub zone certified small business. Um, we have an approval appending, uh, approval pending for um, being certified as an MBE or minority owned business enterprise. Our circle, we don't want to jump that far, right? Our services are intended to be comprehensive strategic and, and provide solutions that mitigate or reduce risk and vulnerabilities, improve operational deficiencies and build capacity for sustainable growth. Um, our risk and management services are designed to assist client partners identify, assess and control threats to their organization's ability to achieve their overarching and departmental business goals. When we think about risk management, there's normally one or two types of services that come to mind. We think of the financial industry, right? We think of hedge funds, investments, insurance, and all that great stuff. But from the CCG's perspective, we're not talking about those traditional um, risk services. We're talking more about risk management and compliance. We're talking about audit committee consulting. We're talking about cybersecurity. We're talking about compliance monitoring fraud investigations. CCG views risk management and compliance as one of the fundamental pillars to protecting a company's um, assets, reputation, and, and securing successful operations. The third bucket of services that CCG provides is operations management, right? So operations management, our services there are designed to create efficiencies and processes, build capacity, and identify business solutions that are smart, that's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and, and time-based. When we think about operations management, we can also think of it as those business functions or department um, responsibilities that can be outsourced to a consultant like CCG. And those specific services are accounting, staffing and recruiting, project management, process improvement and reengineering, and many more. CCG operates from a, CCG operates from a space of um, core values that are centered around um, integrity, excellence, and sustainability. And with that, I want to leave us with giving you a way to connect with CCG. And you can find us on the web at www.compconsulting.net. You can email us at connect at compconsulting.net, or you can find us on LinkedIn. And I'll be sure to drop that information in the chat as well. And that's CCG in a nutshell. Thank you. 
Awesome. Thank you so, so much, Stetson. That was great. Um, I am going to turn it over to Rose to kick things off for us. I have to say that is one of the most concise and direct presentations I have seen. So typically I have in my head a bunch of questions that I'm looking for answers for. And I will tell you that I feel like you nailed them all. Um, I love that you included your collaborations and what market, what your target market is, um, you know, and, and sharing your values was important to me. Our company, you know, thrives on relationships and building um, relationships with organizations that share our values. Clearly identified that up front. Another thing that you did that was um, very astute was for me as a corporate professional, sometimes it's hard for me to identify who, which in my stakeholder pools, where I need to go to share your information. Um, that was crystal clear to me. I know exactly now that I'm looking at risk management, not just in technology, but also in audit. I'm working with finance. So I walk away with a clear understanding of what you're selling, what you're trying to accomplish. You know, competitors, I won't really bring up in this one because there's many and everybody has that niche. And I think you've captured it and, and communicated it absolutely. Um, spot on. So I have nothing <laughs> to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that um, CCG focuses on is separating ourselves from the competitors. Like you said, it's mm -hmm. audit, it's compliance, it's operations. Everybody, every management consulting firm offers that, right? But we want it to be known that our services are boutique um, and they're really tailored to cater to the needs of each individual um, client. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would have I would have to agree with Rose. You know, one of the things that we frequently coach our LGBTBEs on is understanding your value proposition and what sets you apart from your competition. And that was very clear from your presentation. And it wasn't too heady, which is something I appreciate. You know, I, I kind of want it on the basic <laughs> terms. I know that you're the subject matter expert, but diluting that to be palatable for everybody, I think is a real skill and you did that with such excellence. So um, awesome job. Thank you. Uh, Hector, any thoughts here for Stetson? You're on mute. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, great presentation and great topic. And I would say like a very uh, well articulated um, about your services and, and what you are doing and what you can offer to the company. And I think that that's a, was a very well presented. The only thing like a maybe um, that would maybe add, if you think that's appropriate, maybe you can add at some point uh, the companies like you are providing service currently so that maybe like a um, maybe that, that will catch other colleague eye on the company eye so you know uh, coming from where I'm where I'm working right now when we know when, which agency working for other companies so that's uh that catch our eye and so that means that would be like a, maybe some value added but rather than that it was a great presentation and very interesting offering so thank, thank you. you thank you Andy, any final thoughts here for Stetson? Yes, yeah, Stetson, great job. Again, very concise, and you do have a very limited time when you go into these big presentations, so it's a great job there. Just a couple of suggestions. Um, I always like when I, so, you know, there, there are some services like my business and your business that are highly customizable, that there's a lot of different offerings, and you can get the, the person, if they're not educated on that area, can get very lost very quickly in it. And you were very concise on that. But what I always recommend to my sales team is leave them with one really, what do you do the absolute best that no one else does? That makes a difference. That's going to leave that, that thing in the back of their head when they're going through that Rolodex in, in 10 months and two years are like, oh, Stetson, it, it, it may be that you have a, a national presence. It, you, you said a lot of them, but you, you know, make it stick in their head at the very, very end, very end. Um, uh, uh, I, I agree about the clients more than, uh, more than anything. I think it's really important to, uh, when you're talking to uh, uh, at the type of um, product that you're selling, 
uh, that they need to know that you're for real, that, that you do it. And, um, and I'm a big fan of fake it till you make it. So I would say my national headquarters is in Boston. My international headquarters is in wherever you said you were. And we are nationwide, right? So uh, if you can cover anywhere, don't, don't make an excuse about it. Just say, we're a nationwide company ready to come to you. Um, and they'll be like, great. I don't have to worry about that. I can check that box. Great job. Love how concise it was. Because when you have th that many services, like, like my company does, I get how hard it is to convey everything in a short amount of time. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent feedback, Andy. Uh, thank you, judges. And Stetson, thanks so much. Really, really well done. And lots of great comments here in the chat. So be sure to drop your contact info in uh, so folks know how to get in touch. And with that, it's hard to believe we are already at our third presenter, our final presenter of round one. We are gonna turn it over to Paul at One Day Waterproofing. Howdy all. Uh, my normal target audience is uh, builders, tracked home builders, multifamily builders. So we're gonna use a little bit of industry lingo just to keep this under five minutes. There we go. One Day Waterproofing provides complete shower, tub, and steam room waterproofing services to commercial and residential builders in the Houston area. By using custom-made styrofoam shower trays, benches, and curbs, along with waterproof foam panels, our leak-proof installation system enables an industry-leading rapid inspection. In other words, we can take you from bare studs to flood tests in as little as four hours. To take full advantage of the one-day waterproofing system, it is best installed at the bare stud stage after plumbing roughing, but before drywall. This forward thinking process has several advantages for you, the builder. First, it allows all sides of the shower to be easily inspected upon completion. Second, we actually take the time to shim those crooked studs and eliminate those bulges due to nail plates over MEP. When we're done, your walls will meet the flatness requirements for today's large format tiles. Third, since we are shimming the studs, we leave those same uh, shims sticking out at the edges so the drywall crew can quickly overlap those same shims. This eliminates the guesswork of what to cover and also the need to tape and float this joint. This keeps all the drywall materials out of the water wet area. Fourth and most important, flood testing before drywall means we can detect and correct any installation errors and eliminating those expensive and difficult to repair downstream waterproof leaks. Working with One Day Waterproofing streamlines a building process by having us replace some of the duties of the plumber, framer, drywaller, mason, waterproofer, and tile installer, thereby reducing their costs to you. This also eases the coordination of the trades and reduces that usual finger pointing that goes on between contractors. One Day Waterproofing has refined our installation process and material selection to give you the best protection against damage by subsequent contractors. All of this translates to quicker building times, less back office paperwork, and more efficient use of your field employees. We are proud to say that our in-house custom-made shower trays by our sister company, Built With Foam, carry the UP seal and a IATMO stamp of approval, making them excellent for curbless shower installations. How many times have you seen a contractor struggle to use a vinyl liner to create a curbless shower only to have it fail inspection or at worst leak later on? One day waterproofing can tie the shower waterproofing into the main bathroom floor waterproofing all in one seamless installation. The old way to build a shower takes a team of guys making a mess, mixing sand and cement, traipsing through the job site, all the way from that annoying sand pile, leaving a trail wherever they've been. Heck, just keeping the other trays from parking on that sand pile is a headache you just don't need. Our process uses no cementitious materials, therefore eliminating that sand pile and the risk of silica dust and keeps the whole job site much cleaner. 
Achieving smooth, rounded shapes has long been a challenge, but the advance of technology and our computer-controlled equipment allows us to repeatedly create beautifully curved shapes to your specifications. One Day Waterproofing puts an end to that same old, tired, week-long argument between the framer, drywall, or tile installer as to why the edges are not nice and crisp and why the walls are uneven. We can create custom curved arches and domes identically. If you want to take your tile installations to the next level, heated floors, benches, and lounge what chairs are optional part of our offerings and therefore can be easily integrated into our complete waterproofing system. One Day Waterproofing has developed standard pricing packages along with a list of options, all of which can be customized to meet your needs. If you'd like to learn more about One Day Waterproofing, please check out our website or give us a call. Awesome job. Thank you so much, Paul. And you know what? I understood most of your lingo in entirety. So you did a great job uh, making me think that I need to redo a bathroom or a shower here. <laughs> so to start, Hector, any feedback here for Paul? Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, good presentation. I think like a much needed and especially uh, whenever where you are. So it's something like it's very important in your house. I think like a, um, you, you presented um, what you're offering um, and what you do. And, and I would think like a maybe would be a good idea just to uh, lay out the materials that you use. Like a maybe uh, what you differentiate from others company that do the same. So maybe uh, say the materials and, and maybe in one of the cases you presented, maybe you can mention um, how much time did you take to finish something and uh, maybe like a, uh, comparing to others, like a, you do in less time, uh, that would be maybe something to, to customer to know. Uh, that would be good to differentiate, but I think it, this is great. Um, I'm very well job and thank you for being here today. Well, thank you. I, I, I hope I didn't miss that, but that was the, I think the first thing we said was we can do it in four hours because the normal process yeah. is between five and 10 days. So to get myself under the five minute limit, that's why I left some things out that I normally would say. Um, for example, they, they, they know, the, the audience I'm pitching to knows how long it takes them. So, right. but thank you. Thanks, Hector, great feedback. Um, uh, Andy, any feedback here as well? Yes, um, absolutely. Paul, when can you come over and start? <laughs> great. I mean, yeah, what, what a great product. And, and you, you know, you're solving a problem. So I think you did a fantastic job of storytelling. And storytelling is, you know, a great way to kind of create that emotional connection with the buyer. And it is people who know how to do that are very successful. And I think you did a great job with it. Um, mm -hmm. If I had any feedback is I would spend a little bit of time um, making your uh, your photos consistent um, maybe create a, a one way that you're going to show them and uh, and maybe like one one main bullet point so the visuals are great but one main bullet point that you're really trying because some people like to read some people like to, to do it but the storytelling and how you did it I thought was was spot on I think you did a really really good job overall great 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 job thank you thanks Andy Rose, any thoughts here to close this back? Absolutely. Hector and Andy stole a little bit of my thunder, but, um, you know, again, I thought it was great storytelling and to piggyback off of what um, Andy just said, I would just recommend putting some of your key points on your slide. So that way people can have the visual and, you know, as far as, you know, you mentioned that, you know, we can do it in four hours. These are our main materials. People, um, because there's so much information that's being processed, they don't retain everything. So you might wanna throw some of those key things on the slide so that's a backup. So they have the visual and they hear it. And then you've covered both points. The, um, I thought it was a great presentation. I agree that the storytelling, it was a great story. Um, I would consider also adding some of that information to the slide so that you could connect more with your audience. So you had a great story, you had amazing pictures to, you know, to help us visualize what your finished product looks like, 
But now I feel like, do I know who Paul is? Like, I didn't feel like I so much connected with you. And then sometimes it just comes with a level of comfort in presenting, but you want to make sure you're connecting with your audience. So if you have key points on the slide, you know your story and your product better than anybody else. Tell that story. Try not to read, even if you have to memorize it. Try not to read it tell that story, I think it would have been that much more impactful, not that there was anything wrong with it, but now in addition to us understanding about this amazing product that you have and service that you provide, we also now made a connection with you. Thank you. That's great feedback, Rose. Um, you know, and we've got some questions here and since we've got time, I'm gonna ask them, Paul, but. First, and I'm sorry if I missed this um, as well, but it would be great to understand, you know, how your pricing is competitive to, um, you know, traditional waterproofing and to really hit hard on that. Because I think one of the things, you know, when you have five to seven days of labor, I imagine there's a lot, there's a big expense involved there that is cut uh, more than in half by hiring a company like yours. So that's something I would consider putting up front. Um, even if you're not able to put an official dollar amount, talking about you know even the percentage of price comparison and that differential, so your client could say, oh, not only is this a better solution, but you know from a financial perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Um, comment here, Brian says, Paul, I loved it. Per Hector's comment, when showing one of the completed classrooms, uh, <laughs> repeating the time, this entire bathroom was waterproofed in three hours and 58 minutes would really hit between the eyes. So really emphasize and underscore again, wow, look how fast we did this. Even if you, as you said, you know, knew that your, um, the person listening would understand how long traditional waterproofing might take. And then Johnny says, do you have affiliates or could you franchise? Um, well, <laughs> I hate to say this, <laughs> but we just opened about a month ago. How we got here is, I was a remodeling contractor for 40 years. So my bread and butter was repairing leaking showers because of bad waterproofing. So um, I got into the uh, retiring from that and, and making custom styrofoam and I had to sell more styrofoam was, hey, why don't we just waterproof and get that part correct? So this is a whole new way of thinking for builders because normally it's just that. The, the framer builds the niche and the bench and then the plumber comes in and puts the liner in and then you know the drywall guys crew and they hang some of the cement board and then the tile guys come in and they do some of the what. And so what happens is it's all this conglomeration of crews and who does what and timing. And in my five minutes, I was allowed here <laughs> to get that point across is really tough because yeah. cycle times, you know, speeding it up by a couple of days is, is good. Uh, the carrying costs involved, the back office, you know, instead of having to write five checks instead of four. So, you know, it was tough for me. To, it took me a week to get this script down to five minutes without delving into all of the pain points of <laughs> upper management of a big building company. <laughs> so, well, and I would say you did an excellent job. And I don't think any of us knew that you just opened doors about a month ago. Um, I definitely think that you could be a GC's dream. I just think about when we were renovating the NGLC offices and installing our own bathroom uh, about a year and a half or two and a half years ago, it would have been really nice to have to cut through the noise in a company like yours, which is an LGBTB would be uh, a great part of that. So uh, you did a phenomenal job and thank you so much for, for sharing with the group, especially for your first official you know, pitch. Well, so, and so real quick, we would be franchising if we get hooked up with any large builders who do work nationwide, because we even talked with some of them and they've said unofficially, if this works like you say it does, which of course we know it does, um, there's no reason why we wouldn't do this nationwide. So we would need people immediately everywhere. So. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Paul, thank you so much again. Uh, thanks for joining us for Sip and Pitch and for your awesome presentation. Thank you. And judges, we are already at that time. We're done with our pitches from round one. So I'd love to turn to y'all for just some closing thoughts as you're looking back on this session, things you like, things, recommendations for folks in the audience as they think about crafting and honing in on their own pitches. Uh, and Andy, I'm going to put you on the spot since you do this a lot as an LGBTBE and corporate partner. 
Yeah, so um, I think the biggest takeaway here, and um, you, you saw three very different proposals um, and how they pitched. Um, I, I would say that um, Paul, I think the so storytelling, um, something we started about three years ago and how we deliver our message has made all the difference in the world. It creates that emotional connection. Um, so I would recommend to everyone listening that when you're doing it, when you're you know sitting there saying, what type of emotional connection can I make with those folks in the room? What is going to tie me to them in some way? And that will make all the difference in the world in your presentation and your sales will go up. I truly believe that I've seen it. And um, I think it really, really helps. And also, you know, visual and then um, being very concise, you know, not, not going off the rails. And I think the sip and pitch, you know, makes you do that, right? It makes you really, you know, keep it um, uh, tied down, but you don't need to, a ton of slides. Um, your story should be coming from you, not your slides. And um, being concise is, is really, really important and people appreciate that. Awesome, Andy, thank you so much. Uh, Rose, any final thoughts here for, for the group? Um, I, I, I will say that I, I like the fact that everybody's um, personality came through, right? So I feel like I know each of you and why you're doing what you're doing. So keep doing that. That is amazing. And I think we gave a ton of feedback, you know, again, um, remember if you're working with, I, I think the main thing is understand who your audience is. So, you know, Paul, if you're meeting with general contractors, ask the, ask the, um, the associate who's setting up the meeting, if they can share a little bit about the people that you're going to be interviewing with. So that way you can determine, do I need to just do pictures? Do I need to put some words on the slide? And that way it'll help you hone it as well. But, you know, not that, like, I think you all have great presentations. Um, you know, my last thing was, would be do your homework, know who you're meeting with, and really tailor what you've already created to the audience that you're going to be presenting to. That's, that's really great feedback, Rose. And I think something really important to underscore there and what you just said is understand the audience you're pitching to and tailor your pitch to that. So it's like applying for a job. You have many different versions of a resume, depending on what kind of job you're applying for and how you're messaging it. And the same goes for your pitch. So you don't need to conquer Rome all in one day and understand who exactly you're trying to capture the attention of, especially when you're entering into a conversation with a supplier diversity professional, know what they buy and know how you can fulfill that niche for them, right? Don't just go in and say, this is my pitch that works for everybody because it's probably not gonna land well with that company. So really great feedback there, Rose. Uh, and Hector, turning over to you for final thoughts here. Thank you, and, and I agree with Rose and Andy comments, and, and I seem just like a great presentation. I'm happy to be here today with all you guys, but it was a great topic, but I always like I mentioned to the agencies I work um, in my work, like a, let us know how you differentiate from others. Uh, how do you know for the your for competitive? Um, and also I like to know prices and everything, but just just getting to know your audience, as, as Rose mentioned, um, that's very important. But I think like a good takeaway is just like a, uh, how we differentiate from others. So that's why we are here. But I think that's right, and that is this is great. And thank you. Yeah, absolutely. What's your differentiator? What's your <laughs> value proposition? To Andy's point, what's your story? You know, that's so important for me to connect with you as a business owner and want to understand why I should invest in you or your product. So great, great thoughts there, judges. Thank you for that. Um, and everything today is just running ahead of, oh, you can't see my phone, is running ahead of schedule. We are way ahead of time. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to rest, relax, stretch your legs. We're going to be back in about seven or so minutes for round two. If you've just joined us, you missed out on some awesome presentations, but there's more to come ahead. Make sure you change your name on Zoom by selecting the rename feature to include your pronouns. That helps to keep this an inclusive and welcoming environment for all. We'll see you back uh, in about seven minutes. And in in the meantime, enjoy a little music.
Hey, y'all. Welcome back to NGLCC LGBT Sip and Pitch Fridays. My name is Sabrina Kent. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a senior vice president here at NGLCC. We just had an amazing first round uh, of presenters, and I know that this second round will not disappoint. Um, just saying at the outset, we've only got two presenters for this round. Our third presenter for round two had an emergency to tend to, so we're just going to roll with the punches and go straight into community and conversation after round two, which is, of course, a lot of fun during Sip and Pitch Fridays. So with that, going to reintroduce our judges, Annie McNeil, CEO of AMI or American Meetings Inc, uh, Platinum Circle LGBTBE with NGLCC and Platinum Circle Corporate Partner of NGLCC. We have Hector Rosado, Associate Director of Program Management at the Chief Medical Office of Takeda. Welcome, Hector. And of course, the lovely Rose Hatcher, Director of Supplier Diversity with our friends at Viacom CBS. So jumping right in, rules and guidelines for those who missed out in round one, each presenter will have five minutes to pitch with one presenter from each participating company. Judges have 10 minutes collectively for feedback and Q&A, and we encourage y'all to utilize the chat as well to drop your feedback in for our presenters. No presentation, no problem. This is an informal zone. We're here to provide feedback and help companies learn and grow. If you are not speaking, please, please mute your microphone. That ensures that we hear everything our presenters and judges have to share with us today. Lauren Schweppe from Team NGLCC is with us. Lauren, can you give a little shout? Hi, everyone. Awesome. Lauren is our timekeeper. As you can see, she provides verbal warnings at both one minute and at 30 seconds remaining. She is not trying to interrupt you. She's just trying to do her job and keep us all on time and running smoothly. So. Lauren is going to be keeping time for you and letting you know when you're running out. And again, this is a judgment-free zone. We are again here in the spirit of feedback and collaboration. So most importantly, last but not least, have fun. And with that, who is sure to bring us some fun, I'm going to turn it over to Elise Slimborg with Brand Pride and their new product, Pride in a Box. Take it away, Elise. Mute. Okay, can you see me and hear me? We can. Awesome. My name is Elise Lindborg, and I use the pronoun she, her, and I am the CEO of Brand Pride, and we are a branded merchandise company. We celebrate 21 years in business this year, and we were the NGLCC Supplier of the Year in 2013, and then in 2019, we were um, uh, finalists in the biz pitch, and then in 2020, we changed our name from Zippy Dogs to Brand Pride. And the main reason for changing our name started in 2018 and we did a survey of Fortune 500 companies and we discovered that less than 6% of these companies used LGBT vendors for pride and less than 6%. This was horrifying, um, it was sad, but we all just, also realized it was an amazing opportunity and we wanted to change this statistic. So after 20 years in business, we finally discovered our why and our why was economic inclusion for the LGBT community and businesses. After all, it's money that truly sustains and lifts our communities up. Um, because of this, no, well, every year I hear, um, companies bragging about how much they spend with diverse businesses. And I love this. I absolutely love this. Um, but I know for a fact that many of these companies are not using um, LGBT vendors for pride. And it's a little upsetting. So because of this, we specifically started targeting um, Fortune 500 companies with their pride spend. And, in, and it worked. And in 2019, we assisted 26 Fortune 500 companies with Pride. And in 2020, we had uh, over 45 companies lined up and then pandemic. Um, all of the Prides were canceled, but have no fear. We still helped many of these companies and brought Pride to their um, employees through curated Pride boxes. Um, in fact, 2020 was a huge year for us. It was our best year in business because um, we put together thousands of custom kits 
sold gallons of hand sanitizer and thousands of face masks. It was absolutely bonkers. Um, but then we thought, we thought about all our LGBT family and friends, and we knew that we we're all missing pride, not just the last year, but this year too. Um, it's the one day in the year that we can let our hair down and celebrate each other. And I thought, let's take our company pride boxes and bring it to the people. <laughs> so introducing Pride in a Box. Um, pride in a Box is here to take your at-home pride celebration from busted to beautiful. When pride parades were canceled, uh, we knew we had to figure out a way to bring the party home. Enter Pride in a Box. It's a one-stop shop for mailing a box of joy to your friends, coworkers, chosen family, or even a secret crush. Um, after all, you can't quarantine pride. So each custom box contains pride-themed home good realness, goodies tailored for your pandemic needs. 95% um, of all of the products in this box were sourced and designed by LGBT vendors. And each box comes with a sprinkle of pride and I'll show you a little bit of it. So here's the box. It's a beautiful black box with a rainbow ribbon and it's got a really cool butterfly on it. And I'm not gonna show you everything cause I have to keep it a surprise. And then when you open the box, so you have this box, you open it and it has all this fun graphics on the inside. And then the lid has a pride in a box. One minute. Uh, our certifications. And then we'll show you just some of the products. Um, we have a dish towel that says, you are my favorite homo. Uh, bandanas that are queer friendly. Oh, it's upside down. Um, Coasters. 30 seconds. Pronoun pins. Flags. Wine charms. Pet bandanas. Oh, trans flag. And for the hairy guys, where is it? We have, a, we have so much stuff in this box, but we're launching next Wednesday, April 21st. Yay, Elise, awesome job. Thank <laughs> you to our This is for the people, not co corporations. We're, it's all about having fun and bringing pride into your homes and celebrating. That's awesome. And I love Kelly's cameo as flag bearer. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Kelly. Um, <laughs> Well, this is great. I'm going to start uh, with Andy to give some feedback here. Andy is no stranger to surprises in a box in terms of the amazing things they do at AMI. So I'll turn it to you, Andy. Yeah, Elise, great job. You know, you have such a great, you have just a great story and a great passion um, for what you do. And what I, what I would like to see um, is um, just some fi financial connection, uh, depending on who your audience is, right? So if you're pitching to uh, uh, corporation is one thing to individuals is another for the corporations, the 6% and the 94% is a staggering number, right? For price. It's, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, if, if you had told me that I would have said it would have been okay, maybe it's 20% or something, but 6% that's, that's crazy. So putting a financial number to that would be, be really impactful. Maybe it, you can estimate it based on your business that it's six hundred million dollars or whatever. Oh, it's it is. millions. Yeah, and um, and you know, and, and you know, get, getting that information. So if it's, there's a diversity officer listening, it's a much easier sell when they have to go to that procurement officer who's in charge of t-shirts or whatever it is, and can do it there. Yeah. So they're you know, really putting some financial impact on that if you're selling into the corporation. It is, but I love the idea. Uh, really novel, and you know, you know, I've been so impressed with all of our promotional product partners that have just reinvented themselves over the last year. You had to, right? And you guys yeah. did, a, everyone did an amazing job and this is a great testament to your creativity and, and what you're doing. So congratulations. Thank you, Andy. Thanks Andy for that. Rose, any thoughts here for Elise? Hi Elise. 
Hi, Rose. How are you? I'm awesome. I thought it was great. Um, I love that you told the story, not just of what you are working on, you know, what you're doing, but you kind of gave us a backstory, you know, reminding us that you were zippy dogs, because that's where I still hear you barking. <laughs> so, you know, it, it just reminds folks who they, you know, we're all behind the screen. We haven't seen each other for a while. So now it reminds folks that we were Zippy Dogs, but here's why we changed our name. I love that you shared that story. Um, I like that you also told where your products come from. And I love that you walk in the talk, right? So that you're talking about brand pride, but you are sourcing your products from other LGBT um, service providers. So, you know, that's important. And that's a story that we don't always get to tell. Um, so for my corporate partners, talk to your ERGs, your LGBTQ plus ERGs. They should not be spending their dollars with anyone but NGLCC. So, Especially staples. You know, I'm, I'm putting it out there. That's right. So, um, you know, I thought it was great. Um, you had me at Wine Charms. I love the flag in motion. So, you know, um, keep up the great work. And you did an amazing job, I wanted to say at the, um, the National Biz Pitch. Um, I love that you also shared, um, you know, your successes with us because that's the first thing, um, you know, for all of the um, LGBTBEs on the phone, I often, sh or on the Zoom, I often say, send me any updates that you have because when, when my organization or when I see your awards, it's an opportunity for me to share you with others, right? So I typically, whoever I sent your information to at first, and they may not have responded, it gives me an opportunity to resend it and say, hey, I gave them to you last year. Look what they're doing for so-and-so. So don't be afraid to toot your own horn and share that information. It gives us as supplier diversity professionals an opportunity to share your information one more time. So keep up the great work, Elise. Um, Thank you. I know you have amazing products and I can't wait to see your new boxes. <laughs> it's so much fun. Thanks so much, Rose. Don't worry, Elise, I'll drop you my address after this is all over. Uh, Better. <laughs> Hector, over to you. Thank you. And hi, Elise. Nice to meet you. And I like um, the way because I didn't meet you before. So I like like uh, you present your background. So very interesting and very informative. And I agree with Rose's comment about how a good way to adapt to this pandemic um, about the box is a great idea and, and all the product as well. And it's very like uh, it's fun and you can use it and also you can share with others. So I think like that's I I very happy you're doing that. The only comment, like I agree with Andy, just look at financial, just to mention about the prices and everything. But besides that, um, it's, it's, it's a great surprise. And, and I think everybody loves to receive like a box with different, like, uh, different items. So thank you for doing this. Thanks. Thank you. We, we've been having so much fun. And, um, you know, we launched next Wednesday, April 21st. Uh, we're using an LGBT um, PR company uh, to help us out. And uh, um, I mean, we used, we were gay all day. So it was awesome. Like the only, one of the only things we couldn't get that was made by an LGBT vendor was the lapel pins, but we'll find one. Um, so the website is prideinabox.com. And then in the chat, I will, there's a discount code. It's uh, lovewins21. Uh, so for you to get 10% off your box and um, depending on how it goes in May and June, we plan to expand upon it and um, go into things like National Coming Out Day in October, um, uh, Trans Day of Remembrance in November, uh, World AIDS Day in December. So there's a lot of opportunities and it's um something completely different than what we normally do. We're, we're targeting the everyday consumer, which is making my brain hurt, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I mean, people are already ordering the boxes and we haven't even um, announced it yet. So hopefully we sell out real fast. And then we know we're onto something. But Very thank you. proud of you. Very proud of y'all, Liz. I think this is awesome. And 
you know, before you mentioned that, I was going to say this should be like a monthly subscription box. You know, people have their bark boxes and their, I, I don't know, face products. And we could definitely put heads together on some awesome LGBTBEs that you can feature along the way. So oh, we'll totally. connect about that offline. But totally. Really yeah, loving I, it. Uh, make sure you drop your, I dropped oh, some yeah. of your info there in the chat, but make sure you drop it in. And with that, a big, big thank you to our judges again for that feedback. And thank Elise you. And Brand Pride and Pride in a Box for an awesome presentation. And uh, oh, now, yeah. You already put it in there for me. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you are most welcome. All right. I am going to turn it over to the wonderful Lisa Konecki. Okay. I, I need to know, Lisa, did I say your last name right? Or is it Konecki? Because I'm getting grease vibes. So I want to know. Well, if it goes Konecki, it is a hickey from a Hallmark store, but it's usually, it's Konecki. So it's Kenneke. like Kennedy with a kick, but I will Love go it. with whatever you want to do. So <laughs> I want to go with the correct pronunciation. So over to you as our final presenter of the day. Fantastic. And okay. And Elise, um, I don't know if the box will, if this, my book will fit in your box, but we'll talk about that. So am I okay to start? Please do, yeah. When you woke up this morning, you were probably saying, I sure hope that I see a picture of a beaver and a lady in a tiara, circa 1986. Oh, my friends, your dream has come true. I'm Lisa Kay, your everyday gay. Why am I telling you about a beaver? Hmm. Well, I grew up in a small rural town in Wisconsin. That's where this accent comes from. And our school mascot, we were the beavers. I was our school mascot. In addition to that, I was also the homecoming queen. It was a small town, uh, but I was homecoming queen. So you can call me queen beaver. And that's my salute right there. Why is this important? Because growing up in Reedsburg, Wisconsin on a farm, there were two differences. You were either Lutheran or you were Catholic. I was raised Lutheran. I was forbidden to date a Catholic boy, but they never said anything about a Catholic girl. So that brings me to becoming a school counselor. And I was in my office, middle school counselor. Remember those days? Student walks into my office and says to me, Miss Kennecke, it's easier pretending to be a boy than it is to be gay in this town. And at that point, I was a 40 year old cisgender white woman of privilege and I was a fraud. How can I help this student? I looked over at my desk and I saw this Trevor pen, same pen. And I know from Trevor's research that one supportive adult can prevent suicide prevention in LGBT youth by 40%, four, zero. So I wrote a book, right? Isn't that what every school counselor does? And I started actually two years writing a blog, resources for educators, for soccer people, whatever it was. Here's a resource, how to be an ally, bisexuality, cisgender. And that book that you see on the right-hand side is actually in a public library in a Southern town in Wisconsin, which is wonderful and my dream. My dream is to save more lives by having that book in every library. There are 444 districts in the state of Wisconsin and some of them speak Spanish. So I would love to have my book translated into Spanish, into Hmong, into Braille. I'm working on getting an audio book started and I also wanna have those videos at two o'clock in the morning on YouTube where a gay kid looks and they can see closed captioning and they know that it's okay to be gay because I didn't know that it was okay growing up. I didn't have role models. And so what I wanna do is I wanna be able to show everyone how to be an ally, how to shift. And that's what the book is about, going from a small A ally to a capital A ally so that we can shift policies and procedures. In the book, I talk about every, everyone under the rainbow, just like Elise, you had your flags going by there. And I wanna start a foundation called the Thanks for Asking Foundation. And that's where the BOGO comes in. Buy one, give one. I would love, I could have a corporate sponsor, you know, right here. I'll put you right here saying sponsored by fill in the blank. 
And then if you buy a book, we'll give one to a rural community, just like these wonderful people who have bought my book. Well, the baby didn't buy the book. I mean, her mom bought the book. But I've had people put my book in the little libraries. That is so exciting to me. Dogs can't read, but you get the idea that the book is for everyone that we're talking about. So these are just some of my friends who bought the book. I want to save lives. That is my why, that is my ikigai, that is my reason for getting out of bed and my purpose. I have presented in 30 states. I am a One member minute. of the National Speaker Association. I have done keynotes, I've given a TED talk. My book is now in a second edition and it actually has a name. And a sp I mean, this is big for Lisa Kennecke from growing up on a farm, just a little country mouse. And I so want to have this book out for anyone, everyone, because as I'm talking to Gen Xers and baby boomers, they're going to have grandchildren who are going to have friends who are using pronouns, who are, don't put me in a box. And I so am so excited. I'm this close to becoming a business um, enterprise right now with, a, and with all of you. And so please, please, please help me spread the word in saving lives by being an inclusion ally, ABCs of LGBTQ+. And I'm Lisa Kay, your everyday gay. Thanks for listening. Oh, Lisa, thanks. You are so awesome and I love your energy. Um, and you know, we're, we're sneak peek for everybody here on the line. Uh, the month of October is not only LGBT History Month, it's also National Book Month. So we're gonna be doing a special Pride Authors Library event for our certified authors. Uh, so you better get that certification through the door before then, Lisa Kay, but okay, good. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna start here with Hector for any feedback for you. Nice to meet you, Lisa, and great, great, great presentation. And what I like, like, is it was very fun. You know how to capture your audience, uh, very, very well articulated and presented. And I think like it's, uh, it's, it's very important what you're doing, like uh, transferring the message, uh, getting to other uh, person around the world on, on different state that they don't have maybe the same privilege as other colleague, other person and just to uh, help them in their journey or maybe teach them. So I think like a, it's more than the feedback, I see like a, I'm, I'm very proud of you, what you're doing. So this is a great initiative. Um, and also if you need help in Spanish, I can help you to translate. So that, that's, this is great. So thank you for doing this. <laughs> Absolutely. And then I'll send you cheese curds from Wisconsin, Hector. <laughs> Hey Lisa, I'm a Canadian, so cheese curds with me are fighting words because Wisconsin just doesn't cut the doesn't cut the snuff for me. Just gotta say, I actually got into a fight with somebody at a Milwaukee Milwaukee brewery about that one time, but that's a story for another day. Maybe when we're maybe when we're sipping one day. Uh, Rose, over to you. Any thoughts here for Lisa Kay? Lisa Kay, great, great, great presentation. Hello, I think this is our first time meeting. It um, is. Definitely, I piggyback off of Hector, what Hector said. Your story was very compelling. I actually hung on every word. I had to remember to pay attention. Do I need to provide <laughs> feedback? Because I just wanted to hear more, um, you know. So author makes sense to me because you told a compelling story. Um, you know, I, I think you're on an amazing journey. And I think that... Um, nothing but good things ahead for you. Um, I have no feedback. I think you shared everything, the questions that I would have asked, um, and I'll just share so you know what went well, was um, you talked about why you wrote the book. You told your story. You also shared that um, at first I wasn't sure where you were going with the slide <laughs> with Spanish and Hong, I'm not even sure how to pronounce Mon. that word. Mm -hmm. Braille, audio. And then you said, here's what I want to do. So then it tied it in for me. It was crystal clear to me that in addition to selling her book and having this amazing story, she wants to be able to reach more folks by translating her book into Spanish, which of course can be other languages as well. So I would say, don't limit yourself. Sky's the limit, you know, so maybe share that um, if there's anything that I would say, build your plan around mm -hmm. 
where you want to go first. So if somebody says, you know what, we have 15,000 seed money for you to translate your book, what Spanish, you know, Spanish might be first, what's second, what's third, what's fourth. So, you know, I think it's a great and amazing story. Um, I think you can take a, um, a, a, a tip from Elise's playbook and target corporations and their um, ERG groups as well. Um, I probably shouldn't be sharing this secret, but oftentimes we don't have sponsorships to bring in speakers, but we can pay buy your books. So keep that I'd in be mind. Okay with Go, that. you know, <laughs> reach out to the corporations and target specifically the um, the LGBTQ plus ERGs in the Office of Global Inclusion. They'll get you in the door. So um, best of luck. I think you have an amazing product and an amazing story, and all the best. Oh, thank you, Rose. Great feedback, Rose. Thank you so much for that. See everyone, you learn the secrets of the trade here uh, on Sip and Pitch Fridays. And I know Andy's going to drop some wisdom next to close us out. So take it away, Andy. Uh, Elise, well, I, I think Elise gave us a secret and one that I love for lots of presentations because I sit in a lot of them is opening up with a joke or a fun, a fun parable or a story. And you did that. And you have to know your audience when you do that. Um, and you knew your audience and, you know, everyone really enjoyed that. And it, it pulled us in right away. Um, my only recommendation is um, uh, set your sites, um, especially if you're talking to corporate America, give them numbers. Um, my goal is to sell 10,000 books this year, and that would cost me, um, I would need $50,000 to do that, and please, please get that for me. So that's my only recommendation if you're in that scenario, because uh, people want to know how they can help when you actually you pull them in. Now, how can I help? And then all of us, you know, let us know how we can buy it and go to your website. Maybe you did, maybe you told us your website um, and I'll definitely be buying a copy. Great job. Thank you, thank you. Version two just hit Barnes and Noble, so I'm excited. Oh, wow, that's awesome, Lisa Kate. Thank you so much. Judges, thanks for your incredible feedback. That concludes all of our presentations for today. Uh, thank you all so much for being a part of this with us. And judges, I know we just did this about 30 minutes ago, but you know, looking back on today's Sip and Pitch program, any final closing thoughts here, either reflecting back on today's sessions or looking ahead to the future uh, for the businesses and folks on the line today? Uh, Rose, we'll start with you. Um, I think it's more of what we just shared. Continue to be yourself. Continue to tell your stories. Um, and you know, the last two, Threw a whole lot of fun in there. So, you know, we, we, we're we on computers all day, pandemic or not. So I would say, you know, continue to make it fun, continue to share your stories, and there's always an audience. Thank you so much, Rose. And thanks for coming back for another Sip and Pitch. We love having you. Perfect. It gives us Thank a little taste guys. of what post, uh, post pandemic life will look like when we're back on that stage and you're judging yes. biz pitch. <laughs> So, um, Hector, any final thoughts here for the group? I would say uh, first, thank you for inviting me to be a Josh. I think it was a great, uh, great, uh, great time with all of you. Uh, all presentation um, were very, very good. I think like a, just to have the courage um, and to present yourself in five minutes, that's a big kudos to everyone. Um, of course, there's always a room for improvement and way to present yourself, um, just to know your audience. But I think like a, everybody did a great job. And I think like a, I, I agree with one comment, just like a Rose mentioned, like it's very important, especially this day, just be yourself. Be yourself, be proud of who you are uh, and present yourself. Um, and I think um, doing that, you will capture everybody uh, attention. So thank you. Awesome, Hector. Thank you so much. We're so glad you could be with us today. And Andy, final thoughts to close us out. Uh, I think my final recommendation, I think we've said it several times, is tell a story and, and uh, you know, create an emotional connection with those folks. There's lots of great podcasts about that now. There's lots of great um, white papers on it. So, you know, free information. So learn how to tell your story like a lot of these folks did and you'll be very successful. So thanks so much for including me uh, in GLCC. I had a blast, I really enjoyed it. So glad you could be here, Andy. And thanks for to all of our judges for dropping your wisdom on us and sharing this space with us in Sip and Pitch Fridays. 
Uh, so we are gonna move over to our final segment of the day, which is our favorite, maybe I'm biased segment, uh, community and conversation. We're gonna switch things up a little bit today. Um, Lauren Schweppe from Team NGLCC is gonna be leading the discussion for community com and conversation and I'm gonna bow out. So Lauren's gonna be here uh, to take things over in about five minutes. So go ahead, pour your drink, stretch your legs. Uh, feel free to stick around for what's sure to be an awesome networking session. Thanks everyone.